Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of Let's Paint a Mini. So I wanted to do some more Mansions of Madness, so what I've got here are the Thralls. These were all miniatures that came with the expansion, I believe it was called, what was it called? Beyond the Threshold, I believe? I believe that's the, that was the expansion that uh, that these ladies were from. Now there's some, some spooky, scary, creepy ladies that have been deformed by an alien influence or something like that, so they've got all sorts of weird stuff growing on them. So we're gonna go a little bit crazy here. And the first thing that I'm gonna, well, the first thing that I did, as you can see, was I did a base coat of black, so I just took a black primer and I uh, did that on all their skin. And I figured that we would actually tackle these ladies in the same way that we tackled the possessed soldiers from the Doom board game. If you watched any of my uh, Let's Paint a Mini uh, from the Doom board game videos, you'll see that uh, I did kind of a base coat of, of a red color, and then I dry brushed some tan skin over that. And we're gonna do a similar thing here. Although we're going to use a slightly different shade of red, and I'm gonna be using Phoenix Red. I actually used this in the video where I painted Charlie Kane and Lily Chen, and I ended up liking this shade quite a bit, so I figured we can go ahead and reuse it. So I've got a, uh, some paint down onto my little plastic surface right there, and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start with their skin, and I'm going to start off with a uh, medium Reaper round brush here. I actually got a new new brush of this. I just uh, decided to heck with it, and I'm just going to get a new one. So I went ahead and I did that, and I don't think it really matters who we start with. One of these ladies, actually, as I was doing their, their priming coats, uh, the base came off. Oh, yeah, you can actually see just a little bit there. I don't know if it'll show up on camera or not, but I had to re-super glue uh, her feet to the base, and I don't, the super glue is still kind of drying a little bit, so I'm gonna do that one last. I'm just gonna put her to the side. Shouldn't matter right now. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and coat all of the skin with, uh, this Phoenix Red color. All of, all of their skin. As you can see, I'm just going over all of the faces completely. I'm not too worried about the eyes or the details or anything like that. I'm just gonna take a little bit more casually here. You know what, I'm probably going to use this brush for their faces and then maybe their normal human hands, but then I think I'm gonna use a medium uh, base brush. I'll, or a, yeah, a, a medium base brush for when I move on to the arms because the arms are pretty big and they've got a lot of surface area. I think that for their arms, actually, I'm just going to stick with the tan skin color. So we'll deal with that uh, whenever whenever we're dealing with the tan skin. So for now, I, what I really just want is the face and then the weird, uh, creepy arm. And that's what we're going to use the kind of like orangey flesh color for. And actually, because I'm not really doing anything that's like super fine detail-wise, I think I'm gonna rinse this brush off, and I'm going to use the old version of that brush that I had. Like I said, I bought a new new one of it. This is the old one that I had. This is the new one. I think I'll just continue to use the old one for a little bit. I think that that'll be fine. No reason not to. I guess it's not really gonna matter to you guys very much, but just for my own sake. I would say don't concern yourself too much with getting a really, really even coat or anything like that, because most of the color is going to seep into the lower contours of the miniature, all the lower crevices and all that. Uh, and if you're going to have any sort of uneven coats or anything like that, it's going to be at the uh, on the kind of like top layers of the miniature, and those are the layers that we're going to dry brush with our skin color anyway. So I, I wouldn't worry about it. Again, you don't need to be super detailed or anything like that, and you don't need to stress yourself out too much about. Uh, getting the, co the good getting the coat even the color nice and even Okay, move on to the next one Okay, and I think that that's super glue. Yeah, that super glue is mostly dried But again, I'm not worrying about uh, about those feet right now. Anyway, I'm just sticking to this uh, to this Phoenix red this bright orangey red color Okay, and then I think that for the rest of the arms and all that, I'm going to use a much larger brush. So I'm going to bump my brush game up. I'm going to move on to this medium base brush that I'm so fond of. This is a Citadel brand brush. And uh, it's got a large surface area to it. So we're just going to use that to coat the rest of the arms. 
This thing isn't, this brush isn't so great when it comes to details, but again, when you're just doing entire coats like this, and you know, you don't need to worry about navigating around the dress or the, the, the hair or anything like that, that's when you can break out this bad boy. Okay, that's one nasty growth of an arm. You know what, I'm gonna do my, my water, my water down trick just a little bit, I'm just gonna tip the dip of, or dip the tip of my brush into my water there just a little tiny bit that adds a little little drop of water at the end of my brush and that thins down your brush substantially yeah look at that this that's not a great method of doing things if you want to get a really really even coat of your paint however like i said we're just worried about doing the kind of lower crevices and and the low contours and things like that where this uh you know a watered down version of this paint will seep into anyway and then the high points which will not be as prominent i mean you can see the black still kind of like showing up there uh underneath all the all the muscle there on the top layers and all that that's not a huge deal because again we're going to dry brush some tan skin over that and that'll make that much easier Okay, and I might need to get out just a little bit more Phoenix Red. I'm starting to run pretty low, but that's okay. If I need to get out more, I can get out a little bit more. And yeah, it looks like I'll need to get out just a little bit more. All right, and that is not too terrible for a first coat on all of the creepy arms there, so I'm going to rinse my brush off. All right, and the next up, I'm going to move on to some tan skin. Now, you might notice that uh, these are still pretty wet, so there's we still want to want them to be completely dry before we start dry brushing. If I can get my camera to focus at all. Can you focus? Hello? Hello? Focus a little bit? A little? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of. <laughs> That's okay. All right. Um, okay, so uh, what we're going to start with is, is some tan skin here. Now, if we look at the tile art... And I think that the art for this uh, monster is actually in the uh, the little pamphlet or rule book that comes with uh, Beyond the Threshold. <laughs> I forgot the name for a second there. And she's got very dark hair. I want to say that the hair is more, you know, kind of black or dark brown. Well, you know what? I We've already got that kind of color scheme going with the witches a little bit. So I figured, why don't we go ahead and... and differentiate just a little bit here why don't we imagine them having blonde hair so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the layer of this tan skin and then we're going to dry brush some uh some golden blonde over that now after we finish with this layer of this tan skin for the hair we're going to use that tan skin to dry brush all of the arms oh and while we have this out too we're also going to uh get the fingers on the hands here and the legs. Okay, and then the back of her arm here, you can kind of see she's got kind of a bare tricep, kind of upper part of her arm there. Okay. That's not too bad for what we're going for there. All right, and then like I said, we one of the reasons why we're doing this too is we're also doing the hair, so let's do the hair really quickly. And you know what, once again, I'm using the newer brush when I don't think I really need to, so let's just get rid of that, move on to this. All right, and that's gonna be the first coat of our blonde hair, and then we're gonna dry brush some blonde over that. Okay, so now let's move on to the next one. We'll just tackle all of these, all of these ladies. Okay, two down. All right, and I think I'll need to get out some more tan skin. I've still got a little bit on my little plastic surface here, but not too much. I'll just make the most of what I can with it. Oh, 
Oh, you know what? I think I, yeah, I forgot to do, whoops, I forgot to do the arm on the back of uh, the one that I just did. Yep, need just a little tiny bit more paint. Well, actually, I'm going to need more for the dry brushing of the uh, of all the claws anyway, so let's just get out a fair amount more paint there. There we go. There we go. It's not the fanciest, but I think that that will do just fine, so I'm going to rinse that off. And now we're going to move on to the fun part of all of this, which is dry brushing all of the claws. Okay, so I'm taking out my medi or small-sized Citadel dry brush. It doesn't really matter which one we start with. I'm just going to start with the one that's probably the most dry. And we're going to load up a bunch of paint onto our dry brush and then just slowly wipe off more of it. Okay, and then we'll just go over the entirety of the arms and the faces. And that will hopefully create a rather gruesome yet convincing effect. Hopefully. <laughs> and you don't need to worry about going over, uh, you know, if you get a little bit of paint onto either the dresses or the hair, not a huge deal, because with the dresses, we're gonna go over those with another color later on anyway. And with the hair, it's the same color as the tan skin, so you're good. You know what, my lighting game is not the most ideal. Is that better? That is much better. Why don't we just stick with that? Or the lighting is at least better for the camera, which is what I'm more concerned about. <laughs> There we go, that is nice and gruesome, isn't it? Oof. The, the sort of like orangey undertones are lovely. Yeesh. I think you got a little bit of a skin rash there, boo. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next one. Yeah, there we go, those look, those look gross. Those are cool. Very nice, okay. I need to get out some more tan skin though. Tell you what, I'm gonna rinse my dry brush off a little bit too because I don't want that paint to stain the bristles of my brush. Sometimes when you're doing a step that's just going to take a fair amount of time or it's just going to take a lot of, a lot of layers or a lot of whatever, Sometimes you'll want to just kind of rinse off your brush every every few minutes or so, just because, you know, again, you don't want to stain the bristles of your brush. That's something that you generally want to avoid. Nasty. Very gross. I love it. <laughs> All right, so now we've got all of the creepy arms on all of our thralls. They look beautiful, actually. I really, really like those. Those are great. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse off my dry brush. And then next up, we wanna bring out the blonde in that hair, so I'm gonna move on to some golden blonde. And we're going to use this, if I can get some out. There we go, not very much. Yeah, okay. And we're going to use that to dry brush all of the hair that they have. And hopefully that'll just make their hair a little bit, a little bit more prominent. Right now they kind of blend in, you know, their hair kind of blends in with, with those creepy arms. And we kind of want them to stand out just a little tiny bit. Loading up my dry brush, wiping off most of the paint, okay. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that brings out the hair just a little bit more. So it looks a little bit different from, uh, from the arms, which is exactly what we were going for. You might get a little bit of blonde onto the faces whenever you're doing this. I wouldn't worry about it, that should be fine. If anything, if, you, if the faces are brightened up just a little bit more than the rest of the arm or whatever, that'll just kind of help to 
make the faces stand out, but I don't I don't think it'll it'll be too big of a deal. All right, so now they've got some nice hair. Beautiful. All right, and actually, I'm gonna take a break, just personally over here, because I kind of need to do this in the middle of the night. That's not the middle of the night, but I need to do this late into the evening, and my wife is gonna be getting home from work soon, and we're gonna go over food options, so uh, we're gonna decide what to do for dinner. Uh, so I'm going to personally take a break right here. You're not gonna notice uh, in the video, because I'm just going to edit immediately to the next point, uh, but I'm going to pick this up uh, tomorrow. So I'll see you guys in a minute. And I'm back. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is, oh, I'm wearing sleeves, I'm wearing long sleeves. Let's get those sleeves rolled up. There we go, much better, okay. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I kinda wanna do their dresses. And I, I kinda wanna avoid, you know, just keeping, you know, black dresses or whatever. I would rather have something a little bit, uh, with a little bit more variety, a little bit more kind of flavor or whatever. So I figured, let's do some blue. Let's do a nice vibrant blue color. Let's not do the dark and dreary blue that we had for the, um, oh, blah, 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 for the uh, hunting horrors. Uh, so let's, well, I mean, I guess, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna use this sapphire blue. We're gonna uh, do a base coat of this sapphire blue with all of the dresses. Uh-oh, do I need to unstuff my uh, bottle? I might need to, let's see here. All right, let's see what that did. Much better, much, much, much better, okay. All right, we'll just continue to use that older um, medium uh, round brush here. So we'll, we'll continue to use this guy. That blue is, <clears throat> excuse me, that blue is coming along nicely here. Yeah, I think that the artwork that comes with this monster is, is kind of supposed to be like a lab coat kind of thing. I think it's supposed to be kind of a kind of a grayish, tannish lab coat. Again, it's clearer in the full illustration that comes with the booklet that I don't have handy right now. But uh, yeah, I think that she's supposed to be kind of like a mad scientist who, you know, after a bunch of mutations and stuff like that, you know, got this creepy, horrid, aberrant arm. But the miniature sculpt uh, is kind of different from that. It, it's again, it's got kind of more of a. It just looks like more like a regular dress and not an actual lab coat. I think that might have just been. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know how they do it. I wonder if, when they're designing monsters and miniatures and all that good stuff, I don't know if maybe they maybe they come up with a bunch of concept art first, and then they sculpt the miniature afterward or if they sculpt the miniature and then they, you know, try to do artwork afterward. I, I would imagine it would be more efficient to do all the concept art first and then the sculpt second. But if that's the case, I don't know why they would make the sculpt, you know, so different from uh, the concept art. I don't know. Yeah, anyone, uh, anyone who might be associated with board games or anything like that in board game design, uh, let me know in the comments. Sound off. Because I don't know. I'm just some idiot. <laughs> there we go. That's a nice, nice blue dress. I like that. Okay. And let's just move right on to the next one. That's another one, another dress down. It's pretty good. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, for some reason, the arms on these thralls, they kind of remind me of the whole Venom symbiote thing. So at the time of recording, Venom just came out. You know, it's gotten, it's gotten its reviews. <laughs> I'm not gonna, you know, I haven't seen it, so I really can't weigh in on anything. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know, just the, the sort of, like, design of the symbiote is very... If I had decided to go with, like, a, a, a gloss black for the arms, 
it probably would have been kind of indistinguishable from the sort of aesthetic that uh, Venom has. I haven't seen that new Venom movie, but I kind of want to see it. I do really like Tom Hardy, and I've heard that, you know, even from the people who don't like the movie very much, I've heard that Tom Hardy is, is actually very, very good in it. And it's clear watching it that he had a lot of fun with it, apparently. And I kind of want to see that. I kind of want to see that kind of kind of bleed into... I, I really like movies, even if they're bad movies. I really like movies where maybe they're not great, but the people who made it obviously, like, very clearly had fun with the whole process. That's kind of how I feel about the movie Crank 2, if, you ever, if you've ever seen that, Crank High Voltage. Because uh, if you look at some of the behind the scenes for that movie, they were, they were all just having a ball. <laughs> it, it just it was all just kind of them making everything up as they were going and having fun with it. And, and, it's, and I feel like that really shows through with the movie. And I really, really like movies like that. And I've heard that Venom is kind of like that, where it's not very good... But it it sure is kind of zany when it's trying to be zany. It's got some sort of like black comedy stuff to it, you know, very, very dark comedy. And, uh, you know, relatively well directed, even if the characters and the, the plot are kind of stale or whatever. I don't know, I'll give it a shot. If you've seen it, let me know. I, I don't know, I'm, I, I welcome anyone's opinion on the channel. So, yeah, go ahead and tell me whatever you thought of Venom in the comments below if you went and saw the movie. Uh-oh, I think I got a little bit too much blue on her arm there. That's okay. That's not going to be noticeable. It'll be fine. Sometimes when you paint miniatures, you know, I've said it before on other videos, and I'll say it again, sometimes you might make little hiccups every now and then, and you know what? It's okay. You know, Bob Ross always said we don't make mistakes, we make happy little accidents. And, you know, sometimes what you can, what you do can be interpreted as a little bit of a mistake, but I feel like how you learn from it and how you come back from it says so much more about your character than, you know, making the mistake in the first place. I don't think it's necessarily wrong to say, oops, I made a mistake. As long as you say, well, I won't let it get me down and I'll try to learn from it. That's all. It's kind of a way of life that uh, I like to stick to. My cat's knocking stuff over. <laughs> Toki, what are you doing? His name is Toki Wartooth, not a bumblebee. My wife and I named him after the Metalocalypse character. <laughs> and now we've got all of the blue dresses on each of our thralls. So I'm going to rinse my brush off. Alright, and then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to dry brush a lighter shade of blue over all of the dresses that we just did. Let's do the wet one last. She's looking dry. She's a little bit wet. Let's let's start with these two. Okay, so I'm gonna take out some. Uh, I think this is true blue. Yes, true blue. It's basically just a, a much lighter shade of blue, and this will uh, be very good for the highlights on all of those lovely blue dresses that they're all wearing. All right, and I'm gonna go back to my small sized Citadel dry brush, and we're gonna dry brush this true blue over the. What was it? Sapphire blue? Yeah, sapphire blue that we did for the dresses. Loading up some paint onto my brush, wiping off most of it, as we do with dry brushing. Okay, let's get going. Oh, I love it. I just love it. I love the coloration. I love how dry brushing is just such an easy way to get beautiful coloration on your on your clothes on your dresses and that kind of thing for your miniatures oh it's just beautiful look at that look at that shade of blue that's lovely and it's a nice contrast to the arm which is what we were going for we wanted a nice nice color contrast Yeah, that's a very lovely color. I like that a lot. Come on, focus. Focus. <laughs> My phone's being finicky. Oh, ah! <laughs> ah, whatever. Okay, that's one dress down. Okay, let's move on to the next one. And I think that by the time we're done with this one here, I think that the wet ones should be nice and dry.
Yeah, and then these ladies are nice and dry now, so let's just move on to them. And then after this, we're pretty much done. We're gonna do some details. We're gonna do some nice kind of little touch-ups. I've got a little bit of an idea for the arms, just a little bit more, but we'll get to that uh, when we get there. Let's finish these blue dresses. And then we might do something with the eyes, nothing too fancy, just, uh, you know, just a little something. And then the shoes. And then that'll be it. All right. Now we've got our nice, lovely blue dresses on all of our ladies. All right. So I'm going to rinse off my dry brush. All right, tell you what, let's do those shoes. And while we're doing those shoes, you can also tell they're kind of wearing these, uh, these bracelets on their right arms there. You can kind of see them right there. Yeah, let's go ahead and do those as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some polished silver. This is just a really, really bright, light, uh, metallic silver color. And we're going to use that for the slippers, their shoes, uh, and their bracelets. And I think I'm going to move on to a small-sized Reaper round brush, just a little bit smaller than the medium one that we were just using. And let's just go ahead and dot each little bead on the bracelet. Don't need to do anything too fancy, just kind of going around the whole thing. And then let's do her shoe. Oh, careful. Okay, and then let's get the shoes. that I think about it. So, uh, in the book, The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy wore silver slippers instead of the iconic ruby slippers that you saw in the Wizard of Oz movie back from the 1930s. And now that I'm thinking about it, didn't, didn't Dorothy wear a blue dress also? So, am I channeling a little bit of a Wizard of Oz into this? <laughs> That'll be fine. It's like a twisted, creepy nightmare version of Judy Garland. Then again, I guess uh, she had more kind of brown brunette hair, and these ladies have blonde hair. So, you know, we got we got a little bit of a difference going on here. That'll be fine. Fun fact, yeah, so in the book The Wizard of Oz, I'm sure most of you know this already, but in the book, Dorothy, the, the, the slippers were made of silver instead of uh, ruby. And they decided to go with ruby slippers when they were making the movie because they wanted to show off the Technicolor. They wanted to show off the the bright, brilliant color that they had access to. And you know, one thing that I kind of heard growing up was that it was kind of an urban legend that the Wizard of Oz was actually based on the American Great Depression that occurred in the 1920s. But uh, was it the 20s or the 30s? It was 1930s. Ugh behind on my US history um, and uh, doop -doop. and people thought that you know everything was like a metaphor for you know something during the Great Depression and one of the things that they had going you, you know uh, perpetuated with this kind of urban legend that it was based on the Great Depression was the fact that the slippers were made of silver and gold you know the two most valuable uh, metals you know in uh, uh, to kind of represent money and the lack of money that, you know, everybody had and all that. Well, I, I think a, a good friend of mine, Gary, actually taught me years ago. And, you know, I'm kind of ashamed of myself for, all, for you know, never really learning this growing up. But that it's actually just a complete and total urban legend that uh, The Wizard of Oz was based on the Great Depression. Uh, and I forget what the time, but I think that the book was written before the Depression even, like, happened. I think. Oh, well, anyway, uh, you can look it up if it's something that uh, that you're curious about. But it just kind of got me thinking about it. Talking about you know Wizard of Oz and silver slippers and all that good stuff. We forgot her bracelet. There we 
we go. That one looks pretty nice. Okay. Okay, that's not too bad. All right, let's put the last one to bed here. might need to touch up the bases with some black at the end of this just because some of them I didn't get the smoothest um, what do you what do you call them adhesions smoothest meldings I don't know <laughs> smoothest something or other uh, for gluing their their feet to the to these bases here which uh, I did not address yet in this video, but these are not the original bases that uh, that came with the mon uh, the Mansions of Madness monsters. These are custom ba well, not custom bases. These are just you know regular uh, flat black bases that uh, that I super glued onto all these miniatures onto. I just prefer them a little bit more than the uh, Mansions of Madness bases, but that's my personal opinion. Okay, so. Now we've got all of their slippers done. And yeah, like I said, there really isn't much more to do. We're just gonna do some, some fun detail stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to dig out, oh, where, where's my stuff? I'm gonna dig out some entrail pink, uh, just a nice, you know, solid pink color. And we're gonna use that to just kind of, not too much, but I'm just going to really lightly kind of go over some of the arms with this pink. Uh, I'll, I'll use my dry brush. I'm just going to use my, my small Citadel dry brush. And I figured we'll just kind of go over the sort of like claws, maybe some of the um, some of the growths and that kind of thing coming off of them. Yeah. Let's use this one. Let's do that one last, actually, since... Her slippers are probably still drying. And I don't want to get, I don't want to touch my fingers onto wet slippers. There we go. We're just, we're just getting a little bit of a little bit of pink onto to some of these, some of these claws, some of these growths. There we go. We just got a little, little bit of pink. A little bit under here. Can I get those those veins a little bit? See those see those veins on her arm a little bit? Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's nice. Again, I, I don't think you necessarily have to do this, but this is just something that I'm kind of doing for fun. There we go. Got a little little bit of pink under there. There we go. Gross. I like it. And I think I got out just the right amount of pink. Just the perfect amount of pink. All right, there we go. Those are looking pretty good. Okay, rinse that brush off. And yeah, at this point, there's really not much more that we're gonna do. I think I'll go ahead and do something with those eyes. Again, nothing too crazy or anything like that, but let's get out a little bit of yellow. Let's go ahead and move on to one of the shades of yellow that I like to use quite a bit, just lemon yellow. This will be a, a good kind of eye color, I feel like. I feel like they're going to have kind of, you know, glowing glowing yellow eyes just a little bit. Okay. And we're not doing pupils or anything like that, so I think I can continue to safely use that, uh, that small-sized uh, uh, Reaper round brush that I was using. And let's just really quickly poke each eye. Ooh, she looks sad. Her eyes look a little weird. Beautiful, okay. I think that that'll about do it. All right, and then for one last final touch, I'm gonna do a weird thing that I haven't actually done. So I went and I bought a, another type of varnish, but instead of getting a matte varnish, I actually, I actually got a gloss varnish right here. Now this stuff, if, if it does what I think it does, it's going to add a little bit of a glossy kind of finish 
uh, to whatever I do. Now, rather than just do the whole thing, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my dry brush and I'm just going to do a little tiny bit and I'm just gonna kind of lightly go over the arms because I don't want the arms to be completely wet with glossiness, but I just kind of want the high points to be a little bit glossy. So I'm just kind of really lightly, almost like dry brushing, uh, kind of lightly, lightly going over the arms and I think that will give the arms a nice, wet, glossy look. And that way the veins won't quite be as, you know, the, the sort of in-between lines won't be quite as uh, shiny. But the kind of growths in the extremities will be. Again, I haven't done this before, so I don't really know how well it'll work out, but hopefully it'll look okay. Right, and then let's rinse that brush off so we can get it before it dries too quickly. And I think that that will about do it. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and call it with all of these ladies here. These are the thralls from Mansions of Madness from the expansion pack Beyond the Threshold. I'll be doing more Mansions of Madness miniatures. I do have the core game plus all of the expansions. And as soon as the new expansion comes out, which at the time of recording is going to be Horrific Journeys, I will definitely do some fun stuff with that too. I'll probably do an unboxing video. I might do some first impressions. I'll look at the miniatures and I'll see if I can try to knock out all of the Mansions of Madness miniatures over time. So thank you everybody for watching. We will see you next time on Let's Paint a Mini. Bye.